Hello guys, welcome to Dr. Science. So today we are going to talk about iodinated contrast. Normally this iodinated contrast is used in CT scan. So iodinated contrast is mainly divided into two types. One is your ionic contrast, which is a charged molecule or a charged particle. And it is also divided into non ionic contrast, which is a uncharged particle. Now, ionic contrast is going to have two particles. It is going to have two particles. One is your benzene and other one is your sodium. Similarly, non-ionic contrast is going to have only one particle which is your benzene. It is going to have only one particle. Ionic contrast is again divided into mainly two types. One is your monomer and other one is your dimer. Similarly, the non-ionic contrast is also divided into a monomer and a dimer. First we are going to see the structure of a monomer. Then we will see the structure of a dimer. So please keep the heading structure of a monomer. Now monomer means it is going to have a single benzene ring. Now this single benzene ring is going to have three iodine particles attached to it. It is going to have three iodine particles. So we can say that a monomer can hold up to three iodine particles. Now we will see the structure of a dimer. Please keep the heading. Structure of a dimer. Dimer means two. Di means two. So here we are going to have two benzene rings. So I already told you each ben each benzene ring can can hold up to three iodine particles. So, as you can see here, a dimer can hold up to 6 iodine particles. A dimer can hold up to 6 iodine particles. Now we will do a little bit revision here. So, types of iodinated contrast, it was mainly divided into two types one was your ionic contrast the other was your non ionic contrast now the ionic contrast was having how many particles it was going to have two particles which is your benzene and the sodium it have two particles now the non-ionic contrast is going to have only one particle which is your benzene. So here we have the, we have only one particle. Now this one is again divided into a monomer and a dimer. So monomer, similarly the non-ionic component is also going to hold one monomer and a dimer. Now we are going to see the iodine to particle ratio iodine to particle ratio now you will say me in a ionic component here as you can see the ionic contrast how many how many particles were there they were two particles and a monomer as you can see here a monomer was holding up to 1, 2, 3. A monomer can hold up to 3 iodine. So what will the iodine to particle ratio? Iodine were 3 in a monomer and in a ionic contrast we have 2 particles. Right? So we will keep 2. Here the iodine to particle ratio is 3 is to 2. In a dimer as you can see here ionic contrast will always have 2 particles. Right? 
so we will keep two here and a dimer was holding up to six iodine particles as you can see here it is a dimer is holding one two three four five six six iodines right so here iodine to particle ratio is six is to two now we will talk about the non-ionic contrast non-ionic contrast is only having one particle so we will keep only one particle here now in a monomer we have three iodine and similarly in a dimer we have six iodine particles so here the iodine to particle ratio is is three is to one in a monomer and six to six is to one in a dimer i hope you are clear with this concept now we are going to see the osmolarity now the osmolarity of this one is 1200 milli osmolarity it means it is it is having you can similarly think of it is like sodium molecules in our body so it is having nearly 1200 sodium molecules in our body you think like that and the osmolarity the osmolarity of this one and this one i will divide here itself 2 1 is 2 2 2 is 3 uh, 2 3 is 6 3 is to 1 so 3 is to 1 3 is to 1 so they are similar to each other so these two will have osmolarity of 600 milli osmolar and this is considered as your low osmolarity contrast okay now this is a misnomer because uh, this one this one was discovered first okay and finally we have the 6 is to 1 or the non-ionic dimer non-ionic dimer is going to have nearly 300 milli osmol it means the sodium molecules this 300 milli osmolar is similar to our plasma osmolarity it means our plasma our human plasma is also having 300 milli osmolars osmolarity okay so we can say that this is one of the safest contrast that can be used in diabetes mellitus patients or the hypertensive patients because uh, these people have increased risk of contrast induced nephro nephropathy now what are the examples of each and everyone we will talk about them so once again the ionic contrast it is divided into a monomer and the ionic contrast is divided into a dimer so what is the example of a ionic monomer contrast the example here is your di atra zoate now this is very simple because whenever you hear the ionic contrast you can you have to remember the suffix eight as you can see here it is ending with the suffix eight similarly there is this ionic dimer and the example of this one is your ioxa glate as you can see it is ending with eight now we'll talk about the non-ionic monomer in the non-ionic monomer the example here is your io hexol whenever you hear non-ionic contrast please remember the suffix ol as you can see here it is ending with ol io hexol is also known as your omnipack which is used for uh, ct scan most commonly 
and finally we have the non ionic dimer the uh, the example here is your io dixonol io dixonol ol it is ending with the same suffix ol all non ionic components will end with the suffix ol iodixonol is also known as your v v pack so this one is your safest contrast that can be used in diabetics or the hypertensive patients so that was about the ionated contrast guys thank you